Here is the prayer for listening hearts and minds. Holy God, pour out your spirit on us as we embrace your word. May you inspire us anew as we seek to follow in Christ's way. Amen. Our scripture reading today is Luke 10, 29 through 37. In this passage, Jesus tells a story to illustrate what it means to be a loving neighbor. He offers this story to a lawyer and all listening in response to the lawyer's question about loving God and neighbors. Let us listen carefully for God's wisdom and leading in this reading of scripture. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. And so, friends, we wanted to share that scripture with you as it's one of the scriptures that grounded our time together in Hastings, Nebraska. Uh, so we're going to share in the form of service stories, if you will, various stories of our time together uh, that all in some way lift up how we saw people going and doing likewise, seeing needs and responding to them out of love, uh, and seeking to build up community and connection. So we're going to start with Toby and Maggie, uh, who will share with us about growing in the garden or gardens. Hang a second. So we had a, we had. We had a tour of what was called was the middle school community garden. And take it away, Toby. What he liked best. The mud kitchen just made my day. I felt like <laughs> guys keep going. I felt like the hammock. I don't know why chairs. I wrote chairs in there, but yeah. Just floating in the air. Play area was like a path to something. The waterfall was like the best kind of in the job, but it hasn't been. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Nice job. Stay up here. Don't go away. So, so we we saw a garden that was way more immense than what we've got out here. Um, and as a outside learning classroom for the middle school as well as attraction for community. And they had raised beds, in-ground plantings, um, hugel culture mounts, and they used um, a lot of donated materials. They had one structure that was the frame for a swing set on which they were growing uh, vining crops. I believe they were, I remember they were gourds. So we saw a lot of stuff, things that we can bring back here. Toby mentioned they have a geodesic dome on site now, so they can do year-round gardening and year-round activities. Um, a lot of things that we thought maybe we could, we could try here. They have some permanent plantings that maybe we can incorporate. And Toby was right, they did a very good job of having 
activity areas for the kids while their parents or their significant adults were working in the garden on the making a community. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Is anything yeah. else? Or are you done? Yeah, they had a, like a mud kitchen and where there's a faucet actually up there. So you turn it on and then there's muck in <laughs> and it the was bottom muck. of it. And you mix the muck with the water and then... <laughs> and he and Annika had a fantastic time. Um, across from the church, there is an old middle school that was purchased a number of years ago by the church, and now it's called the Peace Center, and they use it for a variety of community activities. So on Saturday, we walked across the street from the church, and um, we went to help with the United Food Harvest. About once a month, a semi from Omaha brings boxes of produce and canned goods that are distributed to families in the community. Um, we joined volunteers in greeting people and loading up cars with food. They have a very organized system for getting the cars through the line in an efficient manner so that there are no long lines of waiting. So many of the families were Hispanic. So Laura and Ted, who are fluent in Spanish, were assigned to be greeters. The rest of us, including Toby and Annika, loaded supplies onto garden carts or pulled the carts with supplies to the waiting cars. Each family was given a box of produce, a box of staples such as canned goods, rice, and beans, and additional items were pounds of hamburger, a loaf of bread, and locally grown cantaloupe. By noon, approximately 270 cars came through the line. Some cars picked up supplies for friends and family who were not able to come to the center. We ran out of supplies, so the last few cars that came through were given vouchers for the local grocery store. So it was pretty amazing to see how the community came together to support the families that need food. The second service project we were involved in was called Open Table. <clears throat> One month a year, the Presbyterian Church participates in this and they have a goal of preparing 6,000 lunches that are then taken to Catholic Charities for distribution. We got there at quarter to 10 and started making sandwiches and getting lunches ready. Um, the lunches consisted of ham sandwiches with a piece of cheese on top, fruit cups, pretzels and chips, pudding, and then a spoon and napkin. Annika left her mark here also. I think she's going to be an inventor. If you can imagine opening up probably several hundred boxes of the pudding, you know, the four, well, she figured out if you just slid them out, tipped them over, slid them out, you didn't have to open those boxes. It may not seem like much, but it saved a lot of time. <laughs> Good job, Annika. Toby was also very helpful if we needed something. I was on the sandwich making area. If we needed bread or cheese, Toby, could you bring us some? And he was right off to get it. I'm just gonna talk about one of the people that I sat next to. Her name was Andrea. She asked if I'd call her Andy. She had Down syndrome and she waits every year for the time to come and make ham sandwiches. And I just think it's nice that all ages can be included in this project. And I, my understanding is that because we helped when um, Kendra and Ted and Annika and Toby went back for the next Sunday, um, they were able to complete this project of 6,000 lunches. So they finished a week early. Do you want to join me, Ken, or is it up to me today? 
I'm open to that. Uh, I'll start and you can finish. Uh, so one evening, uh, some of us went to a welcome picnic for um, migrant farm workers who were coming to town to help detassel the cornfields. And this is, a, my understanding, a picnic that has now happened for a number of years um, in which First Presbyterian Church Dale helps partner to make this happen. And it, it is what it sounds like. It is a picnic in the park. Um, there's a family, the Evans family, Mark and Aida, who kind of are in charge of the main course, which is some very authentic, um, authentically made tacos, um, because that would be a familiar food for the migrant farm workers who mostly come from different parts of Mexico. Um, and then the church brings sides and salads and desserts, and it's just a, a, a welcoming line of all, court, all kinds of food. Um, it was a little delayed because it had rained that day, so the workers were in the, f the fields longer um, than anticipated, but eventually buses pulled up and uh, mostly men got off and lined up and had a wonderful meal together. And I was mostly touched if you consider all the ways that um, migrant workers are, are slandered or spoken ill of, especially in, in headlines and in media. Um, they're just real people like us, and it was such a kind and touching gesture for literally a big chunk of the, the town and this effort to, to feed these people and to welcome them um, as part of the, the work they had come to do. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, one of the other things that the church does is all year long they collect long sleeve shirts for the workers. Because when they're in the cornfields, you know, you, your skin gets abraded rather significantly by some of the corn stalks. So they actively collect um, long sleeve shirts to hand out to folks so that it makes their job a little bit, uh, a little bit easier. Um, yeah, one of the other things that I had a chance to do was spend some time with a couple of legal aid workers who help with, uh, if there's issues with visas or if there's issues with the treatment they may be getting or employers or whatever, um, they get a chance to uh, have some representation, which might be a little bit difficult if you don't speak the language, don't know where, where things are going. Um, so I'm just looking at my notes here to make sure I, I um, they said that when the workers come, they come for a particular contract. They don't just come open-ended and see if they can work. They have to have a contract with an employer. Um, and that contract specifies what they're going to, where they're going to be and for how long. And so they were in Hastings and if their contract said that they were gonna be in Hastings for three weeks or a month or whatever it is. Uh, at the end of that contract, they have to go back to their home. And then if they wanna come back to the US to work somewhere else, they have to go through reapplication uh, for getting visas. So it's a long process on both ends. Uh, it's pretty difficult. Sometimes they're lucky enough to find an employer where they have multiple locations so they can just go from one location to another and it alleviates all the extra paperwork and the overhead that goes on with that. They also said that companies that they work for are supposed to provide uh, food and housing. That's good. She said that uh, some of the employers have really done well. They have new or relatively new uh, um, housing for them and, and uh, do a good job with providing uh, you know, food and meals. Other companies, eh, not so well. They, you know, they, they may have um, leaks or they may have things that don't work and, and they are considered often poor and inadequate in housing uh, for the workers. So they get a wide range of, of things. Um, this year it was a particularly small group. It was about 75. It said oftentimes they get 100 to 150 workers uh, to come to the picnic. So it's pretty well received. You know, people were really energetic and enthusiastic. Um, and it was kind of a good social time for all those folks.
Um, so, there was this, um, it's a little bit too loud, Mommy. It's okay, you can talk. Um, so there was this, like, um, wheel picking. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but I did play with, what's your name? Cla Cla Clara. Um. I did play with Claire a lot, which is which was really fun. <laughs> so. so we're talking about how we came together uh, as a sort of a small family and, and bonded together. Um, and it really started on the road before we even got to Hastings, Nebraska. Um, the morning we left, uh, Interstate 94 was shut down because uh, I think a semi truck went over in the construction zone somewhere in uh, Woodbury or Lakeland. And uh, we had to go through Hastings and Prescott and across to Northfield. And um, I believe it was Vince Jin lent us um, a couple, uh, several um, walkie talkies, or as Annika calls them, uh, talkie walkies. <laughs> And we were able to stay in touch. And Toby and Annika had never uh, used walkie-talkies before, I think. And so we had to take turns in our car with who was talking to the other cars with the walkie-talkies. And uh, we got to Hastings, Minnesota. And I think Vince, or no, I'm sorry, um, uh, Ken went on and said, Hastings, we made it. I said, well, it's the, it's the right town, but the wrong state. And then on, on the road, we, uh, what we do in our family is we count, we try to count state license plates on the interstates on road trips. And so the other cars helped us with that. And I think we got to over 30 over the course of the whole trip. Um, in Hastings, Nebraska, we shared several delicious meals together. Um, we also had several fun card games and a couple of them had a pretty competitive edge. Uh, to them. We learned, I think, don't mess with Barb Sutherland with <laughs> car card games uh, or any competitive arena, I think. Uh, and uh, we uh, also, every night before bedtime, uh, Pastor Laura led us in sort of a wonderful reflection and where we all came together and shared thoughts and highs and lows throughout the day. Um, I'm talking about growing as a group family. And we arrived in Hastings, Nebraska after a day of caravanning through three states and trying to keep up with our head car. And enough said about that. <laughs> Mission accomplished. After getting all our gear out of the car and deciding which rooms we were going to sleep in and unpacking, we were greeted by our hosts fed a lovely dinner, and then got an overview of what we, we would be doing at our, on our stay. We ended our day with Pastor Laura and our devotions, and um, she read out of a book that uh, Annika and Toby could understand, and then read out of a book the same thing that we could understand. We were tired, but glad that we all got to Hastings without a problem. Friday was a full day together with our group. We enjoyed all the activities at the community garden. I especially loved playing in the mud pie kitchen with Toby and Annika. We were all enjoying the time together after a good night's sleep. We were warming up to each other. Our evening devotion with Pastor Laura was comforting and it was nice that we got to hear each other talk about highs and lows. Saturday was another busy day with activities, and we were really getting to know a lot more about each other. By the time we had our devotions and reflections, I said the high for the day for me was we were getting to act like a family. Saturday was another busy day in activities, and we were, did I say this? We were really getting to know each other even more. By the time we had our devotions, sorry, I already read that. <laughs> we, 
we are laughing more, playing more wicked card games, playing new games that Annika and Toby explained to us. Just like a family, some of us sat quietly and read a book or enjoyed working on a craft pod project while others would maybe slip away for a nap or a walk. I took a picture of Toby pulling a wagon full of produce for the United Harvest. He had such a big smile on his face. I knew he was aware he was doing something to help a neighbor in need. Monica showed a group of people from the Presbyterian Church in Hastings a new and faster way to get the pudding cups out of their little box. She will be remembered through the ages. <laughs> we each pitched in, as a family supposedly does, to help keep the kitchen clean. Hats off to Ken Woolley. For making the dishwasher work each and every day. <laughs> also want to thank Judy Platts, Barb Sutherland, and Kay Harp from, for some of the best food I've ever eaten. This last part is simply about me, but it does bring the family along. I was born in Hastings, Nebraska. Lived there until kindergarten then never ever saw the town again. <laughs> so when I heard that this was going to be a mission trip to Hastings, I thought, yeah, <laughs> sign me up. Well, unknownst to me, the, day be the week before we left, Kendra called the church my dad was pastored in 1940-something to 1950-something and asked if we could come view the uh, church. She gave us a time, and I thought this would be something Kendra and I just snuck off and did, but no, the whole group went with me. And so I don't, I don't remember much of Hastings at all, but I remember the parsonage where you walked across the street, went to a side door. That's all I remember about the church. But when we got in, Something hit me because I looked and there were um, balconies on each, on each side of, and I thought, I remembered that. Then a couple other things maybe I remembered. But I took pictures to bring back to my mom and sent some to my sister and brother. And, and that was a real highlight for me and having a family with me was good. <laughs> now. This intergenerational service trip may be something I will never forget. Making new friends in Hastings Church, seeing what Hastings is doing for people in need, and the activities Hastings provide to strengthen their community impressed me. I highly recommend going on an intergenerational service trip if you have a chance. Working together with young and old is a special gift to all. Thank you. So just a, a few concluding words. A couple other things to highlight that we did. One, um, we went to, we went out for ice cream because, right, you have to. Uh, but we did it for a particularly special reason. There's a little ice cream shop that started in Hastings a couple of years ago that's completely staffed uh, by people with special needs. Uh, so a great opportunity uh, to support them, to support that business, uh, offering uh, employment to those that might otherwise have a little trouble here and there finding employment. So that was a, a great thing uh, to build community as well. Uh, the other thing that we didn't mention uh, that I think sums it up well of what we saw there, uh, the very first night uh, we went to watch uh, the rehearsal, a practice uh, for a folkloric uh, dance group that was, so most of, of the people in this group um, are uh, Latino of some way, uh, Hispanic people who live in the community. Uh, the leader of it uh, several years ago saw kids after school with nothing to do 
and was like, I can help. So she decided to start this dance group and started it in her driveway for free, as I understand, uh, and just invited kids to come, have some physical movement, be able to connect for many of them with their culture. She teaches them dances from the various provinces in Mexico to help them stay connected with that part of their heritage. Uh, and a member of the church saw them rehearsing outside and said, hey, we have space, would it be helpful? Uh, and so then over the last several years, the church has helped uh, support this group in various ways, not just giving them space, but helping support the costumes that they have. And now they're traveling all over the state to share this. Uh, and I think that was a really great example of, and, and that's what we saw throughout our time there, is people seeing needs in their community, uh, seeing other people doing good and just working to support it, which, which I see here all the time as well. Uh, so I was, I was inspired. Uh, most of you know Hastings is my hometown, thus I make light of it sometimes, uh, but I do love it. But going back and seeing it in a different lens was really special for me as well, that opportunity sometimes uh, to reflect in a different way. And I think it gave us all lenses to see our own community a little differently and uh, excited to see what things we learned that we might be able to share here uh, to be uh, those Good Samaritans, seeing needs in our community and responding with love. Uh, so we hope all of those stories help inspire your reflections as well. And who knows, we might do this again. <laughs> uh, so we hope it also inspire you to think about how you might uh, be similarly blessed like we were uh, to travel together and serve together. So let all God's children say, Amen.